is a real pleasure for me and the Protect Accent campaign to have today Lina Galvez Munoz, who is an MEP in the European Parliament. Uh, she is from Spain. And um, over uh, the, the way that I got to know you, uh, Lina, it was about your uh, Twitter video that got viral about accents. So I just want to know, uh, well, I want to welcome you to the Protect Accent interview. And I will kindly like to, to introduce yourself, if you don't mind. I, I, it's an honor. For me, it's an honor to be here with you in this and um, help this campaign and working for this campaign. So go ahead, because for me, it's an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could you please tell me a bit more about yourself? And where you're from, what do you do? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm from Seville, from Andalusia, in, which is uh, all the southern part of Spain. Uh, I, I started to, to, to study in my hometown in Seville, but, but by when I was 20, I moved to Lyon in France. Uh, where I finished my you know, the, my degree, my university degree. I also finished as well in Spain a bit later on, but I did finish in in in, uh, in Lyon in, in in France, and then I moved to do my PhD at the European University Institute in Florence, in Italy, uh, where the uh, postgraduate uh, University of the European Union is located. So it's an international center. The European Union. So we were people from all around Europe, all the region of Europe, um, that were selected to, to do our PhD there in different fields. And after that, uh, well, part of my PhD, I also um, went to the LSC. I was at the LSC um, in London. And uh, after I have my Bible, I, I got my PhD. I moved to, to London. Um, I was um, Teaching, I was lecturer at the University of Reading, but I was also working in in Blackfriars at the city at Unilever, uh, doing some research for the for the company. I stayed there for a while, then I moved back to to Spain to to Madrid, at the University of Carlos III, and then I moved back to 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 Seville again, where I stay um, until last year that I. Um, move to, to Brussels, but just, uh, well, I, I, I go uh, every, every, every week and uh, return every week to, 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 to my hometown uh, to work close to the citizenship and also to, to, to follow as much as I can my personal life and my family life on the weekends. Um, and well, I, well, I return as I say around uh, to my hometown in between 2005, 2007. Uh, for a while in 2015, uh, I was a visiting professor at, at, at Oxford University. So I came back to Richmond again. Uh, and well, um, I have a daughter, a nine year old daughter. And um, well, I'm academ academician and an academic person, uh, but now are, uh, is involved in politics. I started to, 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 to get involved in institutional politics two years ago when I, start, when I was a member of the Andalusian government as a regional minister for universities, innovation, entrepreneurship, and social economy. And uh, since then, I, uh, I have decided or I'm uh, participating in, in, in politics in a more institutional way, uh, but always as, as what I am, I am as, uh, an, an academic and I'm trying to, 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 um, well, to, to spend some time in, in, in politics, but as, uh, as a citizen that, uh, well, trying to, 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 to work and to help for, for a better world and uh, by fighting for social justice, basically. And uh, I am being uh, my research and my political uh, commitment always very much involved with the women's rights and equality. Well, I think more or less. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a journey. <laughs> Well, as I mentioned before we started this interview, for me, it's an honor 
to, to get the opportunity to meet you and to interview you. And uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, just to say that the city where you're from, Seville, which is a beautiful city, by the way, uh, yes. is based in Andalusia, where we do have an strong accent. Well, not a strong accent, let's say beautiful accent. An accent yes. that are very typical from people from Andalusia and characteristic. And um, I just want to know more about why are you so passionate about accent uh, and inclusion in all the different forms and level of communication? Uh, because I do remember one video that went viral in, in Twitter and you were claiming your accent, your Andalusian accent in different languages. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, it was, um, it was uh, the, 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 uh, um, the Treasury uh, Minister is uh, from Seville, is from Andalusia uh, as well. And she's uh, now the, um, how you say, the portavoz, the, the, uh, the speaker, the speaker of the um, Spanish government. And uh, so she's, she was the one going out every day in front of, of the media and everything, explaining all the measures uh, that the government was taking in order to fight against uh, COVID. And she was extremely criticized by her accent, but not in a, in a very cruel way. So in a, in a, in a horrible way, uh, just uh, saying that she was uh, um, someone that Mm, was not prepared to be minister. She's a doctor, a medical doctor, and she has been regional minister for many, many years. She's someone uh, very prepared, very intelligent, that speaks very well, but she speaks with a strong accent, that's right. But beautiful, strong accent, but because uh, Andalusia was uh, um, not historically, but in the last two centuries was uh, a poor land in Spain that were, um, especially during um, 20th century, especially during Franco's regime, a lot of uh, uh, Andalusian workers, especially coming from rural areas, uh, migrated to other parts of Spain and were taking all the worst uh, uh, work, works. Uh, um, yeah, working in houses, working in in, in factories, in, uh, in sort of the the lowest uh, status uh, uh, employment, uh, we are identified with um, people with no culture, with no education. It is true that uh, up to we arrived to the, to to the uh, democracy, we were uh, one of the regions uh, lagging behind on the literacy because it's a very unequal, it was a very unequal and still is a very unequal economically and socially very unequal uh, region and where the elites were not interested at all on having a literate population. So they did not encourage, they did not make possible uh, uh, the a lot of people from especially from rural areas to, to go to to schools to get literated and to later on to go to the university so this there is this we are we have inherited all the um, uh, let's say uh, what we have suffered in literacy terms uh, during Franco's regime and even before that because of the, these uh, agrarian elites uh, they, um, this very unequal uh, share of our um, property. Mm. Uh, so it is true that we were a bit behind all literacy but it was not because there is nothing um, um, that we we are like this because of uh, I don't know because of God wanted us to be like this, but because of uh, um, a specific uh, a historical reasons of a lot of uh, inequality. It's only about class. It has, that's that's the thing. But the, the thing I would like to to insist as well that is um, 
but two things, and then we move on. Otherwise, I will not have my yeah. best meeting yeah, ever because again. I love I love this the, I love this subject as you could imagine. <laughs> I'm economic history professor, so that's where I am. So um, I have studied quite a lot. Of this uh, the, it is the oligarchy. There are kind of oligarchies that uh, were. I mean, they're. Um, in order to, 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 to get on with their accumulation and their, um, and their power, they needed also um, um, a society that was consuming or were, uh, improving. But for the, uh, the agrarian and the Lucian elite, uh, or, I mean, the, um, their accumulation of, of capital was basing in very um, cheap labor and the availability of cheap labor. So they, for them to have a literate population um, was against their own interest. So it's also a, a question of, of the, the, the elites and the inequalities um, in, each, uh, and in each place. So that happened in Andalusia, but also because we were not in a democracy, we were in a dictatorship. So not even the population has the possibility to, 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 to change that uh, structures. And in addition to that, um, the, is, is, is the study say that it's kind of 100 years to overcome this, in, uh, this problem of literacy, because even if um, your parents are literate, probably if your grandparents were not, um, so your parents will be literated, but poor literated. Possibly you will not have enough books and so on. So this is not something that uh, the, the, uh, the educational system could cope only with. So the, the, what happens in the family is something that, you know, is a bit inherited in a way. And also because uh, Andalusia has uh, continued to be a high unemployment region the one of the region with highest unemployment in the whole European Union. So still now there is this identification of accent, uh, of the Andalusian accent with poverty and with illiteracy. Not only that, because uh, I don't know why, but uh, maybe, well, I could say that, that I don't know for, but, uh, because I've studied, but we are, um, um, a land of uh, art, a lot of artists in painting, poetry, uh, singing, dancing came from Andalusia. So it's, it's a land of art. And, um, um, you know, flamenco is from our land. It's not for Spain, it's our land. It was only but because it was the, the most uh, beautiful uh, expression of art. Uh, 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 the the Franco's regime and even before identified this uh, essential of uh, the Spain with that, but it's not a Spain. It's Andalusia. I mean, it's, it's sometimes it's a bit ridiculous to to see someone from Madrid dancing Sevillanas, for instance. It's very ridiculous, to be honest. But it's it's, it's taking it's a kind of um um this also came um, out with an identification of the Andalusian accent with folklore and, uh, you know, this kind of uh, no, n n something that is not serious as well. And um, so the, and also because we're supposed to be funny persons as well. So a, a, you will only find Andalusian accent in, in TV series, for instance, if there is the, the cleaner, uh, the funny one, or the artist one. But not a minister, not a prime minister, uh, not um, a, a university professor. I, uh, I remember, I don't know, many times I've been uh, giving talks in other parts of Spain, and at the end, I said, ah, look at her. A woman, Andalusian, uh, look so intelligent she is. Wow. Because it's out of the stereotype. Absolutely. 
Well, and it's true, like it's true. I, I will relate everything that you say, I will echo everything that you just mentioned. And this is the, the history and um, hopefully with this type of campaign, we can change the future, the future of Spain and the future of other people. And we need more people like yourself than is gonna be, you know, the, the people and they're gonna represent a country like Spain than we serve more than we have and more than we offer, well, than the people believe that we can offer. Um, and just talking more about the accent and power and work relation, I'm just wondering at your level, what do you think your accent impact in the way that you are, when you, it comes to making important decisions? As you say, you're a woman, which is another plus that we need to add. You are a migrant. You have an accent from Andalusia. So how do you think that that relation work when it comes to making important decisions? Well, I have to say that I'm a migrant. I never consider myself a migrant because um, each time I decided to go to another place, it was my own free decision. It was not uh, moved by necessity. And I think this is, this is important because I have never consider myself uh, as a migrant. It's true that when you are abroad, you are in another country, you are a foreigner. Uh, but for instance, when I was, um, just to, to, to put an example, when I was living in London, uh, I was able to buy a house in a good, uh, with my husband there, with, uh, in a good neighborhood. We even have an English woman that was cleaning in our house. So I want to make that because probably my own experience is a bit different on, the, on that respect. Because when I was um, living abroad, uh, I was not in a low status uh, in the society. And I think that is important, especially in, in, in countries like the UK, where in which class is important, where accent is more related to class than to um, regional origin and that they, they will even accept me more in some places than a British person coming from working class. Because I was a university professor. Foreigner, it's true. Maybe I, I think things have changed now with Brexit and everything and there is more xenophobia now in the UK, but my um, personal uh, experience is more related to, 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 to class uh, um, and where accent were very much related to class. And because I was a foreigner, first time I lived there was when I was studying to part of my PhD at the LSE. And I, re I remember a very well, a couple of colleagues that because I was a foreigner and they were not able to know my family origin because of the accent, because I have a foreign accent, but not a class-related British accent. They even asked directly to me from which social class I came from, because they were not able to know because of my accent. Wow, that's really interesting. Probably good is not a surprise to myself, but uh, I do consider myself a migrant woman, just because, yes, as you say, we took the the option, like the, the freedom to move, in my case, to Ireland, but I don't think due to the circumstances and there is at the moment in Spain, I don't have the possibility to go, to go back. So somehow- But I had the possibility. So why I was, because I, I at least, well, I have had the possibility to go, to, 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 to come back. And now, as soon as I want to come back, I will come back because even now I have my permanent position at the university. I'm full professor at the university and I have this permanent position that will stay for me when I will come back. So why I was making this related to my own experience, not Okay, just not because I, I, it's nothing elitist or anything. I'm not saying, just saying that my uh, personal experience is, could be a bit different in that respect because I never, never 
felt that I was, uh, I, I felt myself as a foreigner, but not as a migrant because it was all the time based on the voluntary and always I knew I could, um, well, it was not easy to come back within academia, but it was possible. And how do you think it's going, is this, the situation in Spain is more about foreigners, people than they are coming from abroad, or is more, as you say, a, a issue related to social class? Because I have my mixed feeling about the Spain. But in Spain, I think there is, there is um, a lot of stereotypes uh, regarding regional origin. And uh, there is a lot of stereotypes, especially um, linked to some um, regions, uh, especially I think it's very clear uh, and is related with class as well uh, regarding uh, Andalusia. Uh, but I think also there is a lot of um, stereotypes uh, related to Catalan accent when Catalan speaks uh, in Spanish that are also very much uh, rejected. And uh, uh, there are other stereotypes that go on. There are people that are not, um, they only look for money, they will not uh, be clear. And there are other regions that are um, linked to better stereotypes. And people that um, are so from accents are Sorry. better uh, considered. Uh, well, what about people that they are coming from South, South, South America? Then we do have a big population of people coming from there or people coming from the North of Africa or people from when they're coming from other different cultures. How do you think that is working in Spain in that relation? Of course, there is uh, racism, even if uh, uh less than in other places I, I guess but there are of course they are and the accent is uh is a way to 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 um to to discover those people let's say that way and of course uh, all the um, I mean, automatically are you know that people from the southern america are called panchitos in a very despective way, um, even if they if they have uh, uh, racial differences, even more the same with African and uh, Chinese. Now that there are more, uh, but I think again there is a question as well of um, of classes that are in, there is an intersectionality again mm, because when talking about uh, football players, we don't have that problem. Or uh, when, don't know, I, I think of famous uh, TV, whatever it is, because it's not a TV presenter, whatever, Boris Itaguirre, for instance, that is from Venezuela. Um, he is differently considered. Uh, so I think there is uh, intersectionality and even in those people, that are in a different pos social position, even the accent could be considered um, even nice or even uh, what a nice Spanish they have. Um, for instance, the, 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 the popular party, the conservative party, did they have an Argentinian uh, origin person as a speaker up to last week? But, she was a marquise. Uh, she was, and there was not a problem at all with her accent. She was blonde, very white, and a marquise. So her accent was, was fine. Maybe for some people saying, ah, oh, this Argentina, what she's doing here, whatever. But it's, it's not a, it was not a problem. So, I think this intersectionality is something we have to keep in mind all the time. I'm, uh, yeah, like I hear what you say. And again, I cannot be more agree with you. And I know exactly where everything is coming from. And um, back to Brussels. And I, I know you I need to go to another meeting and I don't yeah. want to take much time. So just to, I, I just want to know exactly, again, that power of interaction in Brussels, how do you feel there? How do you feel when you have to take a decision, when you need to raise your voice and to make a point that maybe it's going to be a controversial and it's not going to be welcome? How do you feel that people react 
is there anything related to your accent that can affect that or well the, in, in 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 brussels we have an advantage and uh, it is that we have um, translation uh, to every single um uh official language in uh, in the in the european union uh it is true that in some groups um, the the word which is english at the end and sometimes french but most of the time is is sometimes german whatever but most of the time it is it is english so english speaking people or people who because of their education we are again on class and everything or have had the advantage to have a very good english or whatever they have advantages and that's the way it is now that britain is 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 out um well um, a lot of british mps were in a very good positions because if uh, english is the the sort of the working language they have that advantage and so there in 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 in, in brussels the the stereotypes do not come because of the accent as well if you don't speak moral standard english they will consider you are not good enough or you are not uh, coming from um, whatever position and um the problem is stereotypes related to countries and uh, uh, spain is a southern country and um, it is full of stereotypes absolutely full of stereotypes all the things i have suffered has been andalusian within spain uh, more or less in a different way we suffer from being spanish in the european union um so again a lot of stereotypes and uh, but uh, but also there are differences because there are people that at the end you work very well with and uh, as soon as uh, uh, spanish people are taking uh, high positions or now we have the our highest representative uh, jose burrell uh, that is spanish and speaks many languages very well and so on. and this is always a very good way to 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 fight against stereotypes now we have for the first time i think in our history a uh, government that uh, our president speaks uh, english and uh, we have a lot of ministers that speak english and other uh, foreign languages and i think this is helping uh in order to to, to have a different uh, view uh, of uh, spain but well this is a classist uh, thing that is happening is is having good results for Spain and to fight against stereotypes, but it, it, the origin is, is very classist. And uh, but never mind. I always think it's, it's it's important to speak other languages because as much languages as you speak, you are able to 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 interact with more people, and this is beautiful. And uh, if you could done uh, uh, with your own accent, it is uh, uh, or it's a gift in a way because it's we are what we are uh we are uh our knowledge our the the way we we see the world the way we interact is is from what we are and the accent is uh, uh show our accent show what we are for where we come from or what we are and i think this is uh, something we can lose and uh and it is it's a richness. It's it's it's, uh, it's not uh, um, let's say we have um, to be fear of that. I mean uh, to be honored to to be able to speak with our accent because it shows what, what we are. We are not. Uh, I mean we are citizens of the world, but it's true that each one of us uh, has an origin, has an experience, and. Uh, 
and also when we learn languages is is nice if we are able to to learn with some specific uh, accent uh, for instance i remember very well i, I, I uh, my italian is uh, sometimes if i want i could talk with a toscan accent uh because i was living in florence but i have a lot of friends from sardinia so my accent was sometimes a, a sardo accent because of my friends that um, went from sardinia and uh, but uh, well and now i have to go I'm, um, yeah, I'm really I know, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. And actually, I wanted to close here to thank you so much for your time, for your expertise, for sharing with us your, your experience. I just wanted to close this interview with that kind of last few words and you were saying that our accent is our gift, that we, we are who we are and it's part of our heritage, of our history and the future. So thank you so much. It's my play, I'm an honor for me. Thank you so much. Thank you from the from the Protect Accent team. Thank you very much.